Hey there folks, welcome to lesson 22 of the CompTIA Network Plus course. Today's lesson is about remote connections. So let's jump right into it. What is a remote connection? So a remote connection, it's usually a connection that allows you or a user to connect remotely to a server or a client. And when I say client, I mean something like a laptop, desktop, you know, some sort of device that the end user would ultimately go and use. So you get many, many kinds of remote connections, and we'll go into some of those in just a couple of moments. But in essence, it will allow you or the user to connect to some sort of device, which could be a client or a server, and that device could either be in the same building or it could be somewhere else. And you could be doing this over the internet for all we know. Now, when we connect remotely, this could also give you remote access, in other words, full access, or it could just be for you to see to a certain extent what's going on on that machine. So in some cases, it could allow you or the user to either partially or fully control the remote device, depending on what type of remote connection is being used. If you look at something like a VPN connection, that is just to give you remote access. You can go and access resources remotely. But if you look at something like a remote desktop connection, that can in some cases give you full control. Or if you look at something like a TeamView connection or an AnyDesk connection, you essentially have full-blown control of that device that you're connecting to. So it's really going to come down to what kind of remote connection are we talking about here. And when we talk about remote connections, you also have things like security you need to consider. Some of them are more secure than others. Some of them are purely just used for security, mind you, not necessarily to control something remotely, but just to have a secure connection to the resource that you're being accessed. Now, speaking of security, some remote connections are encrypted for added security, like VPN. And in case you guys don't know, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and that is one out of so freaking many ways you can go and connect remotely to a destination like the office. Originally, it was designed so that you or the end user can connect from some place like home to the office remotely, securely, via an encrypted connection, and that would allow you to go and access resources safely. It's literally as if you are at the office. Anything you could normally do while you're at the office, you could then do as if you're at the office, even though you're actually sitting somewhere else like at home. All right, so let's go into our first official kind of connection here. That would be remote desktop connection, more commonly known as RDP for short. You'll see if we talk about the protocol for this, we normally talk about the RDP protocol. Um, it also happens to work on port 3389 if you need to go and allow it for any firewall or something. Now, if you or a user would like to use this thing called RDP, it is not something you need to go and install. It's usually on a machine by default. This is now assuming you're running the right edition of Windows. So it's built into Windows, but you do need to have the right edition of Windows. The cheaper, lower-end versions of Windows don't normally come of this because why would you want to go on remote desktop at home? That's normally for home users. So if you go look at the higher-end, more expensive versions of, of Windows editions, those ones normally come with additional functionalities like RDP, BitLocker, having the ability to go and join a domain, having the ability to go and create virtual machines in Hyper-V. And if you go look at it for a moment, you know, why would you want to go and do those things at home? On average, the average user does not need to go and do those things at home, which is why we don't have those abilities on the lower end versions. So first of all, make sure you've got the right edition of Windows and you will have RDP. By default, the device you're connecting to needs to be on the same network. I would not say that's a rule. It's not set in stone. It's just by default. These devices that are connecting to one another, whether you're one of them or not, they need to be in the same building. They need to be on the same network, either on the Wi-Fi or the cable, but they need to be normally on the same network. They don't necessarily need to be on the same domain, though. They just need to be on the same network. If you would like to go and RDP into a device which is not on the same network, that is possible. You can do that over the internet, but it's going to involve extra additional steps. For example, like a VPN connection. So if I'm sitting at home on my work laptop and I would like to remote desktop into a machine that's at the office, by default, that's not going to work because I'm not on the same network. My laptop at home is not going to be able to find that device at the office. But 
if I were to go and VPN to the office, for those of you that know what VPN is, that is like teleporting yourself digitally to the office. Anything and everything you could do while you're at the office, like I said earlier, you can do that there. It's as if you're at the office, except physically you're still sitting at home. But digitally, it's as if you're at the office. So once I VPN to the office, then I can go and open RDP, and I will be able to RDP into the machine in question. And then lastly, something we've said already, this RDP, which is Remote Desktop Protocol, is already built into your Windows operating systems, but not all additions come out with it. So if you want to go and use the RDP, make sure the Windows you're about to go and purchase has it available. I've had clients where they would literally go and use Windows just to go and RDP into a server. I've had clients where they would have a pretty beefed up server and all the users, sometimes it'll be hundreds, sometimes thousands of users, would all RDP into the server all at the same time and that would be a permanent solution. Now, if all of these users are going to be permanently working on the server remotely via remote desktop, that means the server, the pieces they're using doesn't actually have to be high spec because everything is technically happening somewhere else. That means those machines can be thin client, but you do still need to make sure that you have the um, correct operating system. So ideally, you want to go and get the cheapest one you can since they're literally going to use that machine just to go on RDP. But you can't go and just get the cheapest operating system because it's probably not going to have remote desktop. So what you want to go and do in a situation like that is go and list them all out. Go and check all the operating systems available. So if you want to go and get Windows 11 or Windows 10, go check all the additions that's available on Windows 10 or 11. And go check what is the cheapest one that's available that has RDP available as a feature. And that's probably going to be the one you're going to go with. All right, so let's take a bit of a look at remote assistance or control tools. So these tools I'm about to list for you guys is some of the, I would say this is probably easily some of the most common tools that the average technician would go and use to assist a user or a client or a customer remotely without having to go to that user, client or customer. It's not the only things we use them for. I mean, there's been many times I would use these tools which I'm about to list for you guys to help a friend out of mine. Not necessarily with a technical problem. Maybe I just want to show them something on my machine or I want to see something on their machine. These tools we're about to list gives you full control of the user's machine. So if you go and install this on the user's machine, which is normally required, and you install it in your machine, which is also required, as soon as I connect to their machine, I've got full control. But at the same time, that user on that machine also has full control. So as soon as I connect well, using one of these tools I'm about to list, I can see their desktop, they can see their desktop, we can both move the mouse at the same time, the mouse cursor that is, we can both use the keyboard at the same time, we both have full control. The only difference is that user is sitting physically in front of the machine, and I'm doing it remotely, but other than that, we both have the same amount of control on this machine. Now, these tools I'm about to list, all of them require you to install this tool or the software on both the end, on both ends actually, so on the user's end or on your end. And usually on the user's end, that user needs to give you their machine's unique ID. So for all of these softwares, that unique ID usually tends to stay the same. But there is a password that randomly changes. So every time the user opens that application to receive assistance from you, the ID will remain the same, but the password is going to be new. That has to prevent you from just randomly, willy-nilly joining whenever you want to, to go and check whatever you want to. So what are these tools I'm bragging about? The first one is TeamViewer, probably one of the most well-known ones out of the lot here. The second one would be VNC Viewer. And the third one, the last one on my list for today, is AnyDesk. So all three of these tools are, for the most part, free. Some of them do have licensed versions. But if you want to go and use it from one user to another user, you can go and get a free version. It's completely free. It does require you to install it on both ends, on both devices. And the device that you're connecting to, you simply need to get that device's ID and you need to go and get its temporary password. So in other words, you're going to have to contact that person via email or via phone, ask them for their ID that you might already have since that doesn't change. And at the very least, you're going to have to ask that person for their temporary password which basically means you've got permission to go and log on to that person's device remotely. And in case you guys are curious, here's a picture of what TeamView more or less looks like. 
So I'm saying more or less because this is subject to change. You never know of these guys. They could always go and change the way the look it feels. So if there's an ID, it's a totally random ID. That is what my ID would be. So when you open up your site, it'll show you your own ID. That is the ID I would have to give to the other person if they were to go and join to my machine remotely and control my machine remotely. If I want to connect to someone else's machine, you'll see that on the right it says connect with an empty block. There you would type in the nine digit number, which is the other person's unique ID. Once you click on connect, it's going to ask you for their, for their unique temporary password. You type that in, you connect, and once you've done what you needed to do and you close the sessions, it's going to ask you for a new password the next time you want to join to that person's device. And the same principle basically applies to the other softwares here. So here we've got VNC viewer, more or less the same principle. And here we've got AnyDesk, also more or less the same principle. You can go and download all of these softwares for free. You can just go around and search for them on Google and you guys will find them there available for free in case you're curious. All right, folks, let's talk about VPN connection. You would have heard me mention this a couple of times in the beginning of the video. It's really one of my personal favorites. And I think one of the main reasons for that is just purely because of how secure it is. Now, you'll find a lot of companies in an actual proper company environment will go and make their own VPN server. On the actual client device itself, that would be the one that you and the, the users use, there you would go and type in your VPN server's address, um, username and password. It's not rocket science to go and set it up from the user's perspective, but it is a bit of a mission to go and build a VPN server on the company's end. Now, luckily, there's many other solutions out there um, you can go make use of that does not require you to go and build your own server or to have some sort of rocket science degree. Anyone and his Bob's uncle can go and use it if you go and use some of these resources that's available online. So first of all, what is a VPN? VPN is short for Virtual Private Network, which I did mention to you guys earlier. We do know that VPN is an encrypted connection. Now, that's very important because if you are going to be connecting somewhere, like to the office, you ideally want that to be an encrypted connection because of some willy-nilly and his uncle is in the middle. We do not want them to be able to intercept this communication in the middle and basically hijack our session or to be able to see what communication is occurring here you'll find a lot of hackers and malicious users out there are going to try to intercept your communication in the hopes of getting something sensitive in nature. This could be something like a username and a password. It can be banking details. There's a lot of things that could potentially be, if you think about it. Now, another thing a VPN connection does, which is something I've been bragging about this whole video, is the fact that it is like teleporting yourself digitally somewhere you're not. And doesn't that sound pretty cool? So originally, like I said in the beginning of this video, that was designed with um, work in mind. So if you are sitting at home, it was a, a means or a manner for you to connect safely and securely remotely to the office and access resources and carry on with your work like you would normally do. And that's absolutely not the only thing we use it for these days. We can use it for so much more. I mean, for example, if you want to go and access resources that's in a different country, which is not available in your country, this could be streaming services like Netflix, you can go and use a VPN connection and VPN into a server that's available in that country. And when you do that, it's as if you're in that country, which now in turn means you can access resources that's only available in that country. So if there's certain shows that's available only in a certain country on Netflix, you simply just VPN to that country and well, voila, there you go. You can access those resources. I've already mentioned to you guys it can be used to access resources in remote locations that you would normally not be able to access. That would obviously be the office environment. So if I've got resources in the office, let's say it's a certain server, maybe the server contains a database, and I need to access that, but to be able to do that, I would normally have to be in the office. Or do I? What if I VPN to the office? If you VPN to the office, like I said earlier, it's as if you're at the office. And it's as if you've just plugged yourself into the office cable there or connected to the office Wi-Fi. And behold me, there you go. You can go and access that same server. VPN connections can also protect your information from malicious attacks, like we said. So if someone is in the middle and they're trying to hijack your session and pretend to be you, or if someone's in the middle and they're trying to get a hold of sensitive information, like your banking details, your logging details to something, even if it's something simple like your Facebook account, your Twitter account, your TikTok account. If you use a VPN connection, 
folks cannot see what you're doing. So they cannot get a hold of your information, they cannot track you, they cannot do a lot of things. It's an encrypted connection. It's rendered useless. So like I said, people and malicious software can't track you online because it's an encrypted connection. So if you're concerned about people tracking where you are in the world, which country you live in, which town you live in, or whatever your personal concerns might be, using a VPN connection prevents anyone online from being able to do so. And I would definitely encourage you guys to go and use a VPN connection, especially if you are using a public internet connection. Your own as well. I mean, if you use your own internet connection, it's also a very great idea to go and use a VPN connection. But if you ever find yourself using a public internet connection, let's say you're sitting in a coffee shop, you're in an airport, do you know how many people are on that free public Wi-Fi? If I climb onto that Wi-Fi connection while you guys are onto it, I can very easily go and take advantage of your machine. I can connect to your phone, your tablet, your laptop, and I can very easily pull all kinds of sensitive information from your device. It's a very good idea, guys, to go and use a VPN connection, especially if you find yourself using a public internet connection. Those are insanely dangerous. That's also a good idea to go and use a VPN connection at home. I mean, yes, your home connection is generally um, less susceptible to be hacked and all of that because there's obviously going to be less people on that network. But it doesn't mean you are protected. It doesn't mean you are secure. It just means you are more secure compared to a public connection, but it most certainly does not mean you are secure. So if someone is out to get you or if someone doesn't really like your face or anything in that regard, yes, I just said that, <laughs> then they can very easily target you and they can get a hold of whatever they want to get a hold of. So I really encourage you guys to go and use a VPN connection, not just for your security, but also because it's got many other benefits. I mean, earlier I mentioned you guys can go and access any kind of streaming service in any country if you go and use that. So I mean, why not? You might as well go and use it. So if you guys would like to go and use a VPN server, no, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. You don't need to know how to go and build your own VPN server. You don't need to know how to go and set up on the client side. Instead, there's lots of VPN services that you can go and use online. One of the ones I personally would recommend to you guys is NordVPN. I'm going to leave a link to NordVPN for you guys in the video description down below. Uh, just full disclosure, if you guys go and use my link, I do get a portion of the proceeds should you go and purchase something on the NordVPN website. So I'm just going to mention that, guys. So if you're going to go use my link, I am going to get a portion of the proceeds. But anyway, getting back to NordVPN, so if you go check them out, you will find that they are the fastest VPN connection available online at this point in time. I think they're about four times faster compared to the closest competitor. I'm not going to mention competitor names here, but they are about four times faster than the closest competitor, which is a good thing because generally VPN connections are natively known to be slow, especially if you want to go and do downloads or streaming and all that. As for NordVPN, nope. You can go and do your streaming and do whatever online. You're not going to experience slow speed, which is a great benefit in my book, if you ask me. So here's a bit of a map for you guys. I think this one might actually be a bit outdated, but that's just to show you guys more or less where NordVPN has got servers all over the world. It's probably a heck of a lot more by now. But that basically refers to what I said earlier. So if you want to go and pretend to be in a different country, you open NordVPN, you choose any one of those servers. I mean, if you're going to go and choose the United States, you'll find there's probably lots of servers available in the United States. So not only can you choose the, which country you want to be in, you can go and choose which one of the many servers in that country you want to go and make use of. Lots and lots to go and choose from, guys. Anyway, once again, here is that link. I have it on the screen, but you can click on that. So instead, guys, just check the first comment in the comment section. I'll leave the link there. Alternatively, just check the video description down below. I will leave the link there for you guys as well in case you guys want to go and check them out. All right, there you guys go. Um, remote connections. Now, hopefully you guys know what a remote connection is and also how important it is to go and secure yourself online. You know, you'll find these days there's probably not a place that's not making use of cloud. There's probably not a place that's not making use of virtual technology and remote technology. It's becoming the future, guys. So with that becoming the future, very important to go and secure yourself. Before you guys disappear on me, just a special thank you to the sponsors of this channel, Patreon sponsors, PayPal sponsors, and of course those folks that clicks on the thanks button below the video. Thank you very much, guys. I do appreciate it. So here's the list of those sponsors. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you all on the next video.